Hello everyone, and welcome to my Sister Wives For You channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Robin Brown, star of Sister Wives, failed to capture the hearts of her viewers. They have consistently charged her of playing the victim and being the cause of the Browns' collapse. As a result, the celebrity's derogatory image endures, and some Brown family members have begun to come clean. When one of Kobe's family members spoke up and discussed Robin, viewers were shocked. After he revealed some startling information, the well-known member eventually referred to Robin as a mistress. Who's this individual? What else was disclosed by Cody's relative? Who referred to Robin Brown as a mistress in Sister Wives? Fans of Sister Wives are well aware that Robin is disliked by most of the Brown children. They have also called her a homewrecker and criticized her harshly. But this time, Cody's own nephew Ben Brown is the target of the criticism rather than any of his biological children. Ben is a stand-up comedian who obtains enough material to poke fun at his own uncle. He has begun to review the Sister Wise episodes and isn't holding back when voicing his brutally honest thoughts about Cody. When the celebrity decided to remark on the first episode of the show, followers burst out laughing. During their courtship, Cody is said to have driven four hours to Robin's house in the aforementioned episode. Ben laughed aloud when he realized that his uncle wasn't actually driving the sporty sports car he had anticipated. He went on to add that Cody is a married man with 12 children who he says he's going to hit on, this hot young thing in Street George, while he has three wives. That's not all, though. Ben quickly pointed out that the main character of the show is a man who is essentially making every effort to integrate his mistress into the family. As soon as they realized Ben was referring to Robin, fans began referring to him as Cody's mistress. Ben is Cody Brown's mini-me in Sister Wives. When Sister Wives viewers first saw Ben Brown's photo, they were shocked. He appeared to be a younger version of Cody, which brought back memories of his early years. The famous child seems to have the same eyebrows and eyes as his uncle, which makes him look a lot more alike. That's not all, though. Ben is grinning the same way as Cody has, as seen by spectators. Ben and Cody's speech patterns are so similar that some people have even pointed this out. He also speaks with the latter's animated exaggeration and rapid-fire delivery. The star child had a clean face at first, but in recent years there has been a noticeable increase in similarity. Ben's hair and facial hair are now exactly the same length as Cody's. Viewers are shocked to see how much Ben resembles Cody, but they are also excited to see more of his commentary episodes. It seems that he has only talked about the first one, the next few seasons will contain a lot more. So, it seems like the drama is just getting started. In the Sister Wise episode airing on Sunday, October 8, Cody acknowledges Janelle's birthday and makes a suggestion about starting over. Mary informs Cody that she is moving her clothes business to Utah without calling it quits on their romance, but he reacts less favorably than she had hoped. At the beginning of the show, Cody and Robin Brown sat down with Mary Brown to discuss her living condition. When Mary says she's moved into her bed and breakfast in Utah, Cody is shocked by the sudden change in living situation. Cody is unsure about my motivation for using a place that we would rent out. Why is he concerned? In a confessional, Mary asks, I don't know why he would care now. He hasn't given a damn about what room I sleep in for the past ten years. Mary was unsure about her property in Flagstaff, Arizona. During the meeting, she admitted, I don't want to live there, and continued, I don't want it to be my house. Cody was reassured by Mary that moving does not mean that she is walking away from their spiritual relationship. When she revealed the anxiety she was experiencing about her business, Cody and Robin were at a loss for words. In a confessional, Mary says, I was really just kind of hoping that he would care a little bit more. I didn't really have any precise requests for him to make or say. All I wanted was for him to exude compassion 
and he did not. Like, these kinds of conversations just kind of tell me, go ahead, Mary, and just live your life on your own like you've been doing, Mary went on, as nothing else is going to alter. Robin intervened when she saw Mary was overcome with emotion and attempted to assist her in communicating her objectives. However, Cody said that Robin's involvement gave him pause, which is why he felt unhappy about her intervention. It appears like Robin is standing up for Mary and me and our reunion, and they're really unsettling me, the patriarch of the Brown family said to the cameras. I have a wonderful relationship with my wife, and I fear that if I leave her, she will no longer respect me. Robin brought attention to Mary's concern, pointing out that although she had relocated only for professional purposes, Mary was concerned that Cody would mistake her departure to Utah for a retreat from her responsibilities to him and the family. Mary makes it clear that she intends to check into a room at her Utah bed and breakfast. Cody is unsure about my motivation for using a place that we would rent out. Why is he concerned? I don't know why he would care now. He hasn't cared what room I sleep in for the last ten years, Mary remarks. Mary states that she had no intention of going back to Utah after the family moved to Las Vegas approximately ten years ago. I would not choose to reside there. She went on, I don't want it to be my house. I want you to understand that I'm not leaving. I apologize, but I still have hope. Unfazed, Cody finds it difficult to comprehend Mary's desire to divide her time between her homes in Flagstaff and Utah, especially when he and Robin don't see any reason for her to do so. Mary said to the cameras, I was really just kind of hoping that he would care a little bit more. I didn't really have any precise requests for him to make or say. All I wanted was for him to exude compassion, and he did not. Talking to me like this essentially tells me to go live my life as I have been doing it on my own, Mary, as nothing else is going to alter. What I'm seeing here is Robin advocating for the reconciliation between Mary and me in our marriage, and it's making me feel very uncomfortable, Cody said to himself. Cody has an apparently brilliant notion as he thinks Mary doesn't know what she wants to do. He suggests building a barn dominium on Coyote Pass and putting Mary and all of his stuff in the loft. However, Cody's suggestion that Mary live in what appears to be a storage area full of his abandoned belongings makes her feel incredibly betrayed. Fundamentally, Cody didn't give a damn about Mary's living situation and could possibly have preferred her leaving, which gave him and Robin the opportunity to show their love for one another without feeling awkward. Garrison, who is 20 minutes away from Cody, recently bought his own house in Flagstaff and is thinking about moving in as a roommate with his siblings, Gwen and Gabriel. Janelle, Christine Brown, Gwen, and Gabriel stop by to take a look at his new residence. When they get together in the living room, the topic of discussion turns to family vacations and how things have changed in the family ever since Christine moved to Utah. They all agree to celebrate holidays apart from Cody, Robin, and Mary in the future, especially since Cody didn't get along with some of Janelle and Christine's kids over the previous Christmas. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.